Welcome back. The objective of this video is to introduce the process for graphing rational functions. Below are some of the guidelines for graphing rational functions. They don't necessarily have to be done in this particular order. Uh, we will jump around on occasion, but this gives you the general guidelines of, of what you want to do. First thing you want to do with a rational function is simplify it. Frequently that's going to mean factoring and working with the factors of that function. It'll also be helpful to note any restrictions on the domain and that kind of ties into finding the vertical asymptotes as well. One of the things you're going to want to do is to find the y-intercept because we put 0 in for x and we solve for y and that's going to be essentially the constants in our function whatever fractional value that has so if we have something like f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2 all over x squared minus x minus 6 we know that we will have one-third as our y-intercept or zero one-third so that's going to be that's going to be pretty straightforward we want to find the zeros so that's where our, our output of our fraction is zero so that means the numerator has got to be equal to zero so we'll set the numerator equal to zero uh, we'll factor and we'll find those x-intercepts fourth we'll find the zeros of the denominator the zeros of the denominator will help us find our vertical asymptotes, as we saw in the previous video. Then we'll want to sketch any other asymptotes, either the horizontal or the slant asymptotes. The, the horizontal asymptotes we saw in the last video, so we know how to do that. That's testing for very large x's, or the battle between our highest degree in the numerator and the highest degree in the not denominator. The slant asymptotes, we'll find that in the next video. And then you'll want to plot at least one point between and one point beyond. We probably aren't going to do a whole lot of plotting. We're going to either do test points and we'll test for positive or negative values, or we'll just use our logic. We'll use what we know about asymptotic behavior, what we know about functions, and draw our curves. Uh, many times we are not going to have to plot many points at all uh, beyond uh, finding our asymptotes and x and y intercepts. Let's go ahead and do a sample. We want to sketch a graph of 2x minus 1 over x. We want to factor the numerator and denominator if possible. That was our step one. Well, that's really done. This one's already factored. So we'll go ahead and determine our vertical asymptotes. Well, that occurs, that's our denominator. So at x equals 0. So we work with our denominator to find our vertical asymptotes. x can't be 0 because that would make our fraction undefined. So that creates our vertical asymptote, and I've already filled that in. Then determine the horizontal asymptote. Now remember, that's the battle between the highest degree in the numerator and the highest degree in the denominator. So that becomes 2x over x, which simplifies to 2 over 1. So our horizontal asymptote occurs at y equals 2, and I have filled that in. Determine our y-intercept. Well, since we have an asymptote on the y-axis, there isn't going to be one in this particular problem and determine any zeros on the x-intercept. Okay, And you'll hear me talk about the y-intercept and the x-intercept as bridges. Okay, There are routes across those axes. Now sometimes we'll have double routes where we'll bounce, but most of the time they're going to be they're going to be bridges across the x and y axis, although we certainly could have ones that bounce on occasion. So determine the zeros. So we work with our numerator. When is our output going to be zero? 
So 2x minus 1 equals 0. So 2x equals 1. We get x equals 1 half. So we have an x-intercept at 1 half 0. So we can plot that right about there. There are no holes in this one. We don't have to worry about holes, so that does not apply. And then test for additional points. Well, let's take a look at our graph first of all. Let's think about functions. Let's start with our x-intercept. Well, we know that we only have one x-intercept, and this is not a double root, so this is a pass-through intercept. And we also know asymptotic behavior. That means that this graph is going to have to approach our horizontal asymptote, and it's going to have to approach our vertical asymptote. So we have to graph down here. We have to use that bridge, which means there's nothing going to happen up in this top upper right-hand quadrant. This is a function. So if we had anything up here, it would violate the vertical line test. So we can't graph anything there. We have to graph down there. Now let's think about our bridges again. Can we graph anything here in the lower left-hand side? Well, we don't have any bridges. We don't have any way to get from above the x-axis to below it. We don't have any way to head towards those asymptotes. So we have no choice but to graph up here in the upper left-hand side. With no bridges, there's no way to get across from one asymptote to the other, so we must graph up here. We don't even have to test. We can use our logic and understanding of functions and move on. Speaking of moving on, let's go to sample two. A little bit more complicated graph. We want to factor our numerator and denominator, which we have done. We have x plus 2 times x minus 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 3. So we have factors of x plus 2 in the numerator and denominator, which would cancel, which means since those two are going to cancel, we are going to have a hole at x equals negative 2. So we'll have a hole at negative 2 something. We want to determine our vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote implies to work with the denominator. We're not going to use the x plus 2 because that's our whole. So x can't equal 3 because that would make our fraction undefined. So that's our vertical asymptote. And I've filled that in in our diagram. Our horizontal asymptote occurs at the battle between our highest degrees, which is x squared over x squared. So our horizontal asymptote will be y equals x squared over x squared, right? We test for x really, really big. So since x, when x is really, really big, the negative 2 and the negative 6 don't matter. The x's really don't matter. But x squared is really going to drive the bus there. And that simplifies to 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And I have filled that in in our diagram. And then determine the y-intercept. Well, we put 0 in for x. We can just look at our constants. If I remember correctly, I think that's just at 1 third negative 2 over negative 6. So 1 third is our y-intercept. So let's go ahead and plot that. Uh, do we have any x-intercepts? We have a factor of x minus 1 in the numerator. So we have an x-intercept at x equals 1. We have a 0 at x equals 1. So that's the ordered pair 1, 0. So I can go ahead and plot that point as well. And then we can determine any additional points. Before we do any testing, let's use our logic. Okay, We have a y-intercept, and we have an x-intercept. That's a single root, so that's going to be a pass-through x-intercept. We have to use our y-intercept. We know about our asymptotic behavior. So our graph in the lower left has to pass through those points. and is going to look something like that. Now, since this is a function, we're not going to have anything above that. Going to the right side of our vertical asymptote, we don't have any bridges or real x-intercepts here. So there's no way to get across that x-axis and follow our asymptotic behavior. 
we have no options so we can just sketch the rest of our graph in the upper right hand side no bridges no way across the x-axis no graph down here no need to test sample three oh I forgot the hole. We have to determine if there's a hole, and there is. There is a hole at negative 2. And what we have to do is we have to input negative 2 into our function, negative 2 minus 1 over negative 2 minus 3. So we get 3 fifths. So we have a hole at negative 2, 3 fifths. We've actually done this problem before. So negative 2 for x, 3 fifths for y, our hole is there so I filled in our hole. Let's move on to sample three. We have a graph of x over x squared minus x minus two. I've already factored that and our vertical asymptotes take place at x equals two and x equals negative one so I filled those in. Our horizontal asymptote is the battle between x over x squared that simplifies to 1 over x as x gets really big. This is going to get closer and closer to 0. So y equals 0. So I filled in my horizontal asymptote. One thing I did not do though, because the horizontal asymptote is for really, really big x's, I did not put it in here between my two vertical asymptotes because these x's here aren't very big. Okay, And you'll see we're going to have some action in there. So determining our y-intercept, our y-intercept occurs at the origin. We put 0 in for x, and we solve for y, we get 0. Our x-intercepts occur at the same location, at x equals 0. Determine if there is a hole. There is none. And now we can go ahead and graph. We have some questions. Do we graph above the, let's look on the left side. Can we graph above the x-axis or below it? I don't know. So what we can do is we can test and we can test any value to the left of negative one. If we get a positive value, we'll graph above. If we get a negative value, we graph below. So we don't really care what the value is. All we care about is it's positive or negative because we have this asymptote at zero. So if I test like negative 10, I would get a negative divided by a negative times a negative. So negative divided by a positive is a negative. So my graph has to be below. And I'll do the same thing on the right hand side. I'm going to test 10. And when I test 10, I get a positive over a positive times a positive, which results in a positive, which means my graph has to have positive outputs it will look like that. So this is my idea of showing work. Tell me what value you're testing and what the results of the test are. That's work. Okay. If you don't show work, I'll assume you guessed and I'll mark it wrong. And then finally, our function, we need to know if it rises, if our outputs are positive to the right of zero or negative to the right of zero. So we can also test one. I'm going to test 1 here. So when I test 1, I get a positive over a negative times a positive. So when I test 1, I get a negative value, which means all the values between 0 and, one, and 2 are going to result in negatives. And since this intercept is a pass-through, I know it's not going to bounce because it's a, it's a single root. My graph will then pass through and go positive. While I had to do a few tests here, I don't really care what the value is. I only care if they're positive or negative because I am 
I only care if I'm above the x-axis, positive, or below the x-axis, negative. So we've had three different graphing rational functions of differing difficulty, and you'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.